Over the years, you've learned about a lot of different types of graphs. And in real life and in business or work, you usually aren't told to make a particular type of graph. You're not given a set of data and, and someone says, okay, make me a histogram or make me a scatter plot. You usually have to determine what type of graph is going to be best to display your data. So what this lesson talks about is how to know which type of graph to pick. And I'm not going to read them all to you because you're perfectly capable of reading through the list of all the different types of graphs, but it goes back to, you know, like first, second grade with pictographs and all the way down to scatter plots, which was our most recent one. So if you want to, if you need to, I would like you to. Pause the video, take a quick skim of all the different types of graphs because in the questions that we are going to do in this lesson, we're going to have to reference this list and pick the graph that would be the best graph to use. All right, when you're ready, let's check out example one. Choose an appropriate data display for the situation, and then we also have to say why we picked that data display. So the first one says, the number of students in marching band each year. So pause the video, scroll up and down the list, look at the list, and decide which graph do you think is going to be the best one if we want to make a display about the number of students in a marching band each year. The best graph is going to be a line graph. Because in a line graph, you see changes over time. You see up here it says changes over time. So we want to see how the attendance in the band changes from year to year. You could probably get away with doing a scatter plot. You could also um, maybe do a bar graph, but certainly a line graph is going to be the best one. And my reasoning is that a line graph has to do with change over time. Okay, in letter B, we want to compare people's shoe sizes and their heights. So take a look, and what graph do you think is going to be the best one to use? I think the best one to use is going to be our most recent graph, which is called a scatter plot. And the reason that I picked that one is because it compares two data sets. If you look up here, it says shows the relationship between two data sets. So one data set would be shoe size and the other would be height. Letter C is the population of the United States divided into age groups. Which graph do you think is going to be the best for that one? The best one for this would be a histogram. And the reason is that if you look up, it talks about how it shows frequencies of data values in intervals of the same size. And our example talks about things in groups. Groups are another way of saying intervals. And as long as you make the groups the same size, for example, it would be like people in the 20s and people in the 30s and people in the 40s. Um, that would be a best representation. So my reasoning is that it shows frequencies in intervals, and the assumption is that those intervals are the same size. If the intervals are not the same size, then your graph is pretty much meaningless because it doesn't show a clear comparison of things. What about letter D, the percents of students in your school who play basketball, football, soccer, or field hockey? So my best one for this one will be a circle graph. Because a circle graph shows data as parts of a whole. So you want to say, okay, out of the whole student body, who plays basketball, football, soccer, or field hockey? You could also, in a circle graph, see which one is more popular, which one is going to have the larger wedge. And then, if obviously, if there are other sports, you could also have an other category. Um, but you could also maybe do a bar graph for this one as well. But I don't think it'll be as flashy as a circle graph. For this question, we want to decide which type of graph is the best graph. And again, just like in the previous example, we could have more than one type. That's the a good type to use. So if this information is something that I care about um, displaying, either for my company or for my boss, 
Um, my boss wants to know what graph A, B, or C, or multiple choices, do you think might be a good data display to use? Well, I think both A and C are good ones to use. And let me just zoom so that everybody fits on the same screen. Um, so definitely not B. Let's go A and C. And here's why I picked A and C. And I'll write it out in a minute. I want to show how the number of hits compares to the number of the, the, month, the, the month that it is. In choice B, all I see is how many times I got that number of hits or in that range of hits. Um, it doesn't tell you the trend throughout the, the year. So, for example, if I were to give my boss choice B, my boss might say, well, when am I getting this many hits? What is happening? Is it Christmas time where a lot of people are visiting my website or is it the summer because I have a you know business that has some recreational activities? When is that happening? Now you can see choice A and choice C show what months I'm getting those hits. So maybe it's a startup company and I'm getting more and more as I become and stay in business longer. Or maybe it's a seasonal company and the summer is not really my most important time to get my website, but December and November are times when people may, are buying things off my website. So A and C are certainly the choices that I would pick for those reasons. When you're ready, let's move on to another example. Now this is something that we've done before several times and you I think you even did it before 8th grade but we never really talked about what happens when you um when you change the scale of a graph. You know, I say you can go by twos and you can go by ones or you don't have to go by the same number on each axis. But what happens when you don't go by the same number on each axis or you change your scale, your graph can be what's called misleading. And if you look at the two graphs that we have, this one, it looks like it has this big, steep increase, and then it kind of levels out. But really, if you look at the scale, it's only going from 9 to 10, or 9 to 11, I guess, probably right here. For this one, because they didn't do this break, you see that it all, I mean, what's really the big difference between 9 and 11? Is it really that big of a difference? I don't know, maybe it is. I mean, it's billions of dollars, so possibly, but... Um, there really isn't that much of a difference between $9 billion and $11 billion if you're talking about a movie making a lot of money. So this one shows a more accurate depiction of the increase in the billions of dollars because it shows you that it's really not that much different between 2005 and 2009. Here it looks like, you know, wow, a lot of people are going to the movie in 2009 where not that many people were going in 2005. And they kind of were pretty much going. Um, maybe the movie price got higher and that's why. Um, maybe it's not really that the, the more people are going. So it all depends, but you want to just be careful anytime you change your scale. And typically, if you change your scale or you make a break uh, somehow, um, you just want to be um, careful that you don't assume that something is increasing or decreasing more rapidly than it is. Now, that's not to say that the graph is wrong. It's just a little deceiving because it looks like a larger increase than it really is. And a lot of you recognize this when you change your scale and then you go to compare your graph to a friend. You say, how come my graph looks different? And it's because you changed your scale. So just keep that in mind as you continue to make graphs. So let's say that the first graph is misleading because it has a break. All right, so now we've got a throwback all the way to like kindergarten or first grade, and we've got this pictograph, and a volunteer concludes that the number of cans of food and boxes of food donated were about the same. Is that conclusion accurate? So it looks like the boxes are almost lined up with the cans, but what makes this misleading? Obviously, hopefully you're recognizing that the boxes are almost as wide as two cans put together. So the cans are actually, you know, almost double the number of boxes, but it looks like it's equal because it's the same length when you line them up together. So probably we would encourage somebody to make uh, the shapes all the same width. 
So let's say the conclusion is not accurate because the boxes are wider than the cans. All right, let's check out one more together. And now we just have to say why this is misleading. Now, I told you up at the top that it's not wrong if you have a break, and the break is what makes this misleading. However, you can't use a break when you start at the axis. When you have data down here, you can't have a break because the break says there's nothing here, so don't look there. It's unnecessary. There's nothing in this area, so therefore I'm going to start at 35. But if you look at the picture, there is information in this break area. So you're not allowed to use a break when you have stuff down there. So this person would have to go maybe by 10s or 20s or something larger or make the graph go higher. But you can't skip all the way to 35 when there is stuff down here. Now, I think also what makes this misleading is that as they make the um, dollars higher, the tickets get wider. So that might also be a reason we want to put down. So I've written, you can't use a break when there is data in that area. Also, the ticket pictures are different widths. Now, even though you know that visually, it looks larger simply because the ticket is wider. So your brain is going to be triggered to say, oh, well, Rock Band C is so much larger than Rock Band A because the ticket is significantly larger. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.